Well, this is going to be a little video showing um, a bad potentiometer and how it reacts on a uh, three different pieces of test equipment, a multi just a standard digital multimeter, and my um, Huntron tracker, which you could replicate by building the so-called octopus circuit, which you can Google and find how to do that and using an oscilloscope. And also I'm going to compare that on my uh, Simpson 260 analog meter. This particular potentiometer caused a real problem. With it, it was in a uh, stud welder. We have two stud welders at work. One that is capable of quite a, I think, seven or eight thousand amps, something like that, and it's for actual studs being welded into a, a thick slab of copper. Then we have another one that's capable of maybe 3,000 amps maximum that we use for um, welding constantan rod into slabs of copper. Basically, you make a copper constantan thermocouple there. And that's the idea of it. It's to measure the temperature of the copper in those particular areas. But anyways, on our one we use for the thermocouple rods, um, a few years ago, blew a hole right through a copper. Normally we, I think the copper rods are normally welded in around 12 or 1300 amps. And of course the maximum amperage in this unit is 3000. And what we found that originally the company tried to blame the operator for it and I started doing some troubleshooting on the welding machine and found that the potentiometer was junk. And I'll show you what happens here. The first one I, that I have connected up is the exact same series style and resistance of potentiometer and it's actually it's a little bit noisy but it's actually more or less good and I'll show you how it reacts. It's a logarithmic taper so the resistance you know it's a 500k I believe so the resistance goes up pretty quickly at first with a very small um, rotation but the one that's bad, you can see the huge difference. It jumps a lot. So here's the good one. I'll just rotate it just a short ways, maybe up to one kilo ohms or so. See, it goes nowhere, and then it goes really quick. Jumps right up. Very small amount of rotation. We're up to 1.2 kilo ohms. But still, that, that small rotation is probably a quarter of a turn, if not more. Now let me connect the junk one up here and I'll show you what it does. Notice that, and this is going to be approximately the same, maybe actually way less rotation than the other one. See how it spikes right up to 15 kilo ohms? I barely moved it. And the area that this would normally be used would be down low since we're only using maybe half of the capacity of this welding machine. See that? So that's one way you can see exactly what happened there. Sometimes you'll have a bad spot, say in the center. You'll have to take, I was trying to find one. In fact, I started a video on one I thought that I had that had a bad spot in the center, but I think I worked it back and forth enough times that the bad spot went away. There must have been maybe dirt or something on there and I couldn't get a good video of it so I kind of scrapped that video and I pulled this one out of the archives instead. But you can see what happens there, the difference between the two potentiometers. And what I'll do next is I'll go over to the Huntron tracker and hook it up and then you can see how it reacts to that same potentiometer. Okay, this time connected up to the Huntron tracker and I'll rotate this around and this again will be a very small amount of rotation and you can see what happens on here. See that? This really shows it visually what's going on there. You've got a heck of a lot of bounce and noise. Basically if you the Operator, see how big the jump that is? The barrel, I'm just, I don't know if you can see this on camera or not. Let me I'll back this up some so you can see all the more I'm actually.
finding this. Very little, and it goes flat lines almost immediately. And that's what was happening. That thing would flatline like that and go to maximum amperage and it'll blow a hole right through the bottom of the copper slab. But next what I'll do is I'll go over to my Simpson and connect it up to it and you can see how it reacts. Okay, next I'm connected up to the uh, Simpson 260 <coughs> analog meter and watch what happens here. <coughs> See that? Again, just a very small rotation right down pretty much flat lines. Well, actually, it doesn't flat line. It goes the other direction, but you get my meaning. So, I just kind of thought I'd show testing of a bad potentiometer. I was hoping to, like I said, I had one here that was noisy in the center. It wasn't that obvious. Those are the ones that are really tough to find. Sometimes you'll on a machine tool, you'll start getting weird um, gantry or uh, yeah, gantry um, servo loop errors, and you find nothing wrong, and it's nothing more than the feed pot producing a lot of noise into the drive or into the control, which goes to the drive. But I think the one that I had here that was noisy, I worked it back and forth enough that maybe I cleaned the dirt off the track that was there. But anyways, I just thought I'd show this real quick and give you an example of a bad potentiometer.